Hello everyone and welcome to a true masterpiece of a game uh, from the VR Chess Masters that is currently being played in Düsseldorf, Germany. Uh, this is from round one, Wesley So versus Young Shisht of Duda. Uh, and it's remarkable that one of the players falls for a, f falls for a trick. May okay, maybe it's not a trick, but maybe it's just a known position. Uh, that's been played um, uh, 50 years ago, but not just 50 years ago, it's been, it's been played 40 years ago, 30 years ago, it's, it's just been repeating itself and uh, someone always falls for it. Now we're gonna get to that. Um, uh, this is not rapid chess like we've covered in the pro chess league. This is classical chess, so players have a lot of time. Uh, it's a 10 player round robin with 120 minutes for the first 40 moves, and then you get additional 60 minutes for, for the next 20 moves and 15 minutes for the rest of the game, and you get a 30 second uh, uh, increment starting from move 61. Uh, if the uh, end result of the tournament is a tie between two players, then we will have a player off. Uh, it's going to be two games of, uh, I believe, 10 minutes. Uh, and then if that ends in a draw, there will be Armageddon. But that's, um, we're far away from that. This is round one, and we are here to enjoy this uh, beautiful game. So let's see what happened. Wesley opens with knight to f3. He goes for the Reti opening. d5 by Duda with g3. Knight to f6, bishop to g2, and now pawn to c5. Uh, gra grabbing the full center as Wesley decided to control the center with his pieces, a very hyper-modern approach. Uh, we have castles by Wesley and now knight to c6. We have pawn to d4, e6 and now pawn to c4. This is all very well-known theory. D captures on c4, queen to a4 ready to uh, reclaim the pawn and now bishop to d7. We have queen captures on c4, c captures on d4, knight captures on d4 now with the triple attack on that c6 knight. So so rook to c8 nicely developing and now knight to c3. You do have this uh, x-raying attack on the queen but there just aren't any good discoveries. So knight captures on d4, queen captures and now bishop to c5. Uh, it seems like black is getting very nice development uh, for pretty much the, the price of nothing. So it's a very interesting to see what Wesley uh, has uh, in store for Duda here. He plays queen to h4. And okay, the, the pawn on b7 is hanging. You have to defend that with bishop to c6 and now rook to d1, attacking the black queen here. We have queen to b6 and this is where the problem lies. Everyone plays queen to b6 in this position, uh, but it's just um, uh, not possible to play this. It seems like you should be able to play this because your bishops are now beautifully placed. You're already attacking the f to pawn, uh, the rook is on a beautiful c8 square, you're ready to castle, uh, it seems like everything is going your way, but there's a problem, and Wesley shows it, bishop captures on c6 with check. Uh, before we go into this line, I would just like to mention that knight to a4, although it looks very nice for white, attacks the queen and the bishop, and also the knight is nicely protected by the queen, uh, isn't all that spectacular, because after this bishop captures on f2 check, king f1, yes, now the queen is hanging, and if you move the queen to a weird square, you're gonna lose the bishop, but it doesn't matter. Bishop captures on g2 check, king captures queen to c6 check, king captures on f2, and yes, white is up a piece, but only one more move, because knight to e4 with check, the white queen no longer defends the knight on a4, and after we move the king, queen captures on a4. Uh, black uh, regains material and is even up a pawn in this uh, crazy line. So that's why you don't do it, and that's why bishop captures on c6 is the main move here. And okay, Rook captures on c6. Queen captures is a little bit better, but still it's a very tough position for black to play. Rook captures on c6 was played, and now we have bishop to h6. And this is, uh, in in incredible as it is, uh, this position has been repeating itself uh, uh, throughout the last 50 years. Uh, the, the first instance of it being played, I found a game between Zoltan Ribli and Ljubomir Ljubojevic from 1978. Okay, that's like 45 years ago. It's not 50. Uh, but who knows how long uh, uh, Ribli has been sitting on this before actually getting a chance to employ it against Ljubomir Ljubojevic. Could easily be five years, could be more, could be ten, like... Uh, uh, you know, Frank Marshall uh, uh, w was sitting uh, seven years on the Marshall attack before he actually employed it against Capablanca, or okay, so they say. Uh, but um, yeah, there, there's just no good way to get out of this for black because whatever you do seems insufficient. If you if you capture on h6, there's queen captures on f6. The rook is hanging, and okay, you you can castle, but then comes knight to e4, and it's just really really bad. The the knight will uh, gain access to this uh, f6 square. It's I mean, uh, a terrible terrible position for black. 
black. Uh, another thing you could do after bishop h6 is just castle, but this uh, doesn't work because of bishop captures on g7. And now after king captures, you will play queen to g5 with check, king to h8, now you're going to deliver another check, and after king to g8, knight e4, and we get um, a very similar position where uh, it is just completely unplayable for uh, uh, for black. Queen is coming to h4, knight is coming to f6, uh, it's game over. So the way Duda defends this, he plays bishop back to f8. Okay, now the g7 pawn is defended, but now Wesley throws in the real uh, idea, and that is rook to d3. Again, this has all been played before, so truly incredible. And... Um, uh, it seems like you could capture the b2 pawn, but the problem is if you do this, yes, okay, the knight is hanging. Uh, look at this, rook to b1. Rook to d1 also can be played, rook to b1 even stronger. And now, okay, you can go like like to c2, then rook to c1, the, the bishop controls that square. And if you go to a3, then you go under the mask of the rook, knight to d5 attacks the queen, and once the queen moves, now you're going to play knight captures on f6, g captures, queen captures, and the black just falls apart. The rook here is hanging, once you move that, just bishop captures captures, king captures, and rook captures on b7, uh, there's no good way to defend checkmate. You could play like rook to g7, but then just rook to d8 check, captures, captures, and this is checkmate. So after rook to d3, the b2 pawn is off limits, uh, knight to d5 is what to do the tries, and now comes knight captures on d5, e captures, and the bishop comes back, bishop to e3, attacking the black queen, and this is uh, completely unplayable for black. Bishop to c5, there is one game that, that uh, uh, where bishop to c5 was played, but here Duda tries queen captures on b2, and it is now as of move 18 that we have a completely new game, uh, but if Wesley finds the correct idea, uh, the, the the game is uh, completely winning for him. Uh, there is only one move that wins the game here for Wesley, so feel free to pause, pause the video here and try to find this uh, uh, silent maneuver while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on uh, connecting the entire board. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is bishop to d4. This move solves all of your problems and imposes uh, um, insurmountable uh, problems for, for black. Uh, because now the queen is attacked, the rook on a1 is defended, the bishop on f8 cannot be developed. Uh, th there's just uh, not, not <laughs> nothing for black here. Queen to b4 was played. Okay, now the bishop cannot move, or, or rather you could, but you don't want to trade queens here, uh, rook to b3 attacks the black queen, queen back to e7, offering a queen trade, and Wesley could keep the queens on the board with something like queen f4 or queen to h5, but he shows that this is completely winning even with the queen trade. Queen captures on e7, now you could capture with the bishop, you could capture with the king, doesn't really make a difference, uh, do the captures with the king to keep uh, defending his g7 pawn, but now rook captures on b7 with check. King to e6 and now rook to b8, completely paralyzing the back rank, now the bishop can not move as the rook on h8 would, will hang. So pawn to h5, Duda has to find some sort of counterplay. He's dreaming of getting this pawn to h3 to at least have some uh, uh, counterplay. But of course, Wesley will not allow this. Rook 8 to b1, we have pawn to h4, and now just king to g2. We have king to f5, now comes king to f3. We have captures, captures, and rook to c4. So he does find some counterplay, but just pawn to e3 by Wesley. Uh, so what can what what can uh, do that try here? The bishop cannot move. The rook cannot move because the bishop will hang. Uh, this is just very very sad to look at. Rook to c uh, two. Uh, rook to c two was tried. It's a it's a very good attempt. If if Wesley makes one slow move, like let's say bishop captures on a seven. Okay, we can even show it. Then rook to h two, and suddenly black is back in the game because you're threatening checkmate and you don't really care about the bishop on f8 uh, hanging. You would have to spend the move to defend, and then bishop to d6, black's position suddenly comes alive. So instead, after rook to c2, rook 1 to b5, saying that, okay, now if you bring the rook to h2, just rook captures on d5, check. We can even show it if you want, uh, and uh, after this check, you don't really care. Next move, you capture the bishop, and you have a square for your king, so you're going to be up a piece. So after rook 1 to b5, king to g6 by Duda, now comes rook captures on d5, rook captures on a2, the material is still equal, but black's position is completely paralyzed. We have rook d to d8, now the bishop uh, is lost, uh, and rook to h2. And now Duda will have to uh, trade the, the bishop for the f2 pawn. We have rook captures on f8, rook a captures um, uh, on f2 with check, 
king to e4 and now pawn to f6. So Duda will still try to survive this, uh, but of course you see that's impossible. Rook to b7 goes after the pawn, uh, pawn to a6, and now uh, even rook to a8. Uh, now you can go after the pawn, you can go after the g7 pawn. That's, uh, I mean, uh, completely, uh, a complete paralysis. Rook to a2, rook a to a7, now putting pressure on the g7 pawn, rook to h7, and now king to f3. Uh, rook to a5, Duda tries something, but none, nothing can move here, just rook to b6. Puts pressure on the a6 pawn and also prepares um, uh, to push the e5 pawn as the f6 pawn is now pinned. So rook to g5, uh, hoping to get that rook to h3 and to get some counterplay, but Wesley does not uh, even allow that. King to g2 stops rook to h3. We have pawn to a5, okay, the pawn is now defended, but just pawn to e4. Uh, we have rook to g4, now the, the bishop will uh, be lost if you push e5 so just king to f3 kicks away the rook rook to g5 and even bishop to e3 improving the position of the bishop before advancing to e5 rook to e5 we have bishop to f4 rook to c5 and finally pawn to e5 you cannot capture because the f pawn is pinned uh, rook to h8 was played now just rook b to a6 puts more pressure on the a5 pawn we have rook to d8 and now e captures on f6 finally going for the capture g captures and rook captures on a5 uh, zero counterplay here for, for Duda, he's down a full piece, rook to c3, check was played with king to g4, and it was in this position on move 48 that young Shishto Duda resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. You have zero counterplay, uh, Wesley is just up a full bishop, and this will be, well, this would be self-torture if, the, if, um, uh, if you continue this. I don't know if there's a nicer word for self-torture. Pretty sure there is, but I don't know it. Yeah, and also, uh, interesting, um, I I've tried to figure out what VR Chess Master stands for. I, I couldn't um, uh, find, uh, even on their, on their uh, homepage, uh, it's, it just says VR Chess Masters. It does not say what VR stands for. So if any of you know what uh, WR uh, Chess Master stands for, uh, do share in the comments as I would also very much like to know. So yeah, uh, incredible as it is, people just keep falling for this and uh, it's uh, it, it's a fun line to play, especially if you like the Reti, so you might want to remember this position. If black plays queen to b6, it's just game over. You, you will go for captures, captures and bishop to h6. Uh, yeah, everyone falls for this uh, throughout history. We, we've seen it happen, like a 45-year-old trick, if, if you count in uh, how long uh, Ribli has been sitting on this, could even be a 50-year-old uh, old trick. because It's not like he prepared it and then he immediately employed it against Dubojevic. Probably he knew about it for a while. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. Know your classics and the good things that will happen. Uh, I would like to thank CDs for trade, Ricky Black, Cassius Johnson, Robert Trenton, and Rodney Barr for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.